watching the buck stops here and I'm Barkha Dat. On our program today, we're continuing with our special focus on the elections. And today, we'll be talking to Jairam Ramesh, Rural Development Minister, but also now the convener of the Congress's election campaign. Where does the campaign stand today? Is it on the back foot compared to the BJP? And is Rahul Gandhi going to take on Narendra Modi directly or will it be left to the Congress ministers? It's Jairam Ramesh on our election nama on the buck stops here tonight. With just a few months, Jairam Ramesh, to go for elections, there is a perception that the Congress campaign is on the back foot. Now, you could argue this is a media perception, this is a media narrative. But certainly from where I'm sitting, it looks to me that the BJP at this point has a more aggressive, organized communications campaign and the Congress is still finding its way. As a convener of this election campaign, would you No, agree? I don't think that's quite true because right now our focus is on the state assembly elections. Yeah. We are focusing on Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Delhi and Mizoram. We have about five or five and a half months for the national polls. And as we you know, come towards January or February, our campaign will undoubtedly pick up momentum. I agree. I mean, you know, we are not high decibel, high octane campaign mm. that the BJP has mounted. Is that deliberate or by design or well, by that's, accident? That's the nature of the BJP. The BJP is the master of hype. You know, it creates the hype. Mm. It begins to believe its own hype. And it becomes a victim of its own hype. What if the voters, the also, believe, what if the voters also believe that? Well, they didn't believe it in 2004 and they didn't believe it in 2009. And I don't think they're going to believe it in 2014. The Congress is much more subdued. It's a slow starter. Mm. I mean, if you were to compare from the world of athletics, the BJP is like a 100 meter sprint. Mm. And the Congress is more into the marathon. You know, so it's a long distance game that we are playing. But right now, our focus is exclusively on the state assembly elections. I'll come to the to the whole metaphor of the the marathon versus the sprint in just a moment. But when you say your focus is on the assembly elections, do you enter these elections with a disadvantage? Because it's widely believed that at least in three out of the four states, the BJP has a clear edge, and even Delhi uh, is a really really tough fight for Sheila Dixit. So, would you accept the verdict of these elections, whatever no. it is, well, whatever it is, will give will be a prelude to what's going to no. happen in 2014? No, I don't see. Look at what happened in 2003. In 2003, we were wiped out in Rajasthan, wiped out in Madhya Pradesh, wiped out in Chhattisgarh. But five months later, we came to power you know, in New Delhi. So I don't think state elections anywhere are a referendum on the national polls. You think this one has nothing to do with the other? Uh, take, a, take a place like Delhi, uh, where uh, the urban uh, response could yeah, be I mean, a measure of what people feel uh, yeah, about I mean, it gives election. you It gives you a certain indicator. But I, first of all, I wouldn't say it's a referendum. And secondly, I would not extrapolate one on one you know, from the state assembly elections. It, they are tough. The no question, they are tough. You know, our entire leadership was decimated in Chhattisgarh as part of a political conspiracy, mm. and that, that really, you know, set us back. But we are still very hopeful of coming to power in Chhattisgarh. So, there are factors in each of these states. The, uh, the BJP is strong in these states. The Congress is in power in Rajasthan. The Congress has been in power in Delhi for almost 15 years. So, uh, it's not going to be easy, but. At the same time, I do not believe that the results of these assembly polls, if they go in our favor, does not automatically mean 2014 is going to be easy for us. And if the, these assembly elections go against us, it does not mean that the assembly that the national elections are going to go in favor of the BJP. Before I get to the big national picture, do you believe that the Congress needs to take Arvind Kejriwal more seriously than it has? And should that seriousness be expressed in decisions that are widely perceived to be which hunts? Why does the Congress in the middle of elections have the Home Minister announcing that the source of funding of the Aam Aadmi Party no. is going to be proved? To the best of my knowledge, I have not followed this debate, to the best of my knowledge, the inquiry into the source of funding is in response to a, or to, in response to a judicial, uh, you know, pronouncement. The High Court. The High Court uh, directive. So I don't think it was a sumo to decision of the government of India to explore the the source of these funds. But to come back to your original question, do we take Arvind Kejriwal seriously? Of course, we have to take every competitor seriously. But has he changed the rules of the game? At least here's a party that says we disclose our do donors on our website. And if you're going to investigate funds, where are the donor donors? lists of the Congress no, no, they, of the BJP. They have, see, there have been Arvind Kejriwals in other parts. You know, Arvind Kejriwal has got a lot of traction and publicity mm. because he happens to be in Delhi. Mm. But some years ago, we had Jay Prakash Narayan float the Lok Sattar party in Andhra Pradesh. Yeah. And he ended up with 2% of the vote. So, uh, I, I, I'm not underestimating anybody. But uh, to, to paint Arvind Kejriwal as a giant killer, mm. uh, somebody who will come to power on his own, uh, I think is is gross media exaggerated. Now you say the Congress is is a marathon runner and the BJP is a hundred meter sprint uh, athlete. 
Here's the problem and you express this problem yourself. You said it was your own frustration that Rahul Gandhi was looking at that long-term perspective. Whereas there's an election no. that needs to be fought no, no. and won, maybe lost right now. In the here and the now, is, La is Rahul Gandhi losing sight of the fact that as he's creating building blocks, that's what he's arguing, he's, built, he's creating building blocks. But what about this election? See, Mr. Mr. Gandhi, as I see it, as I see him as an observer, uh, and as a colleague, is rebuilding the party organization. Can he afford uh, he to do that right now, four months away from the he's elections? He's building structures, he's building systems. They are reflected in the choice of candidates uh, for these assembly elections, in the nature of his campaigning. He's putting in places, he's putting in place processes which will stand the party in good stead. There is a perception that Rahul Gandhi has an esoteric approach to politics, wherein he has these group of experts around him, they've all got fancy degrees from the right colleges in the United States of America, and they come and they look at politics as if it were a Excel sheet, whereas politics is is a bunch of intangibles and a lot of it has to do with being out there, being in contact with people. When you express that frustration of the long-term project of Rahul Gandhi versus the winning and the losing of this election, weren't you actually going no. public with what a lot of no. Congress people feel? No, what no. is that frustration no, about? No, I think, I think you have twisted my remarks completely out of context. See, uh, yes, for sure Mr. Gandhi is trying to build a new politics. He's trying to build a new Congress. But at the same time, he's a member of parliament. He's the vice president of the Congress party. He's, he's our leader. He's, he's masterminding and executing our election campaign for the assembly elections and for the 2014 Lok Sabha elections. So to, to say that for him politics is only an Excel sheet, uh, I don't think is, is absolutely right. Let me give you one example of what I mean. Uh, you say that Mr. Gandhi has to demonstrate the politics of the ground, right? Let me tell you what he has done in UP, which has got virtually no media attention and no media traction. In the last six years, Mr. Gandhi, through an organization that he heads, the RGMVP, the Rajiv Gandhi Mahila Vikas Pariyojana, has mobilized 11 lakh women into almost 93,000 self-help groups in 40 districts of Uttar Pradesh. Now, this is something that very few politicians can boast of. This is on the ground, 11 lakh women. 93,000 women self-help groups. Now, you may say, you know, Jaram Ramesh speaking, so it's not independent. I think the best tribute that came to Mr. Gandhi was that just 10 days ago, the Uttar Pradesh government, mm. which is not exactly our ally when it comes to the mm. polls, signed an MOU with the RGMVP for expanding this activity from 40 districts to 75 districts.